All right, all right. Shalom, Israel, most high in Christ. Bless. It's mid morning medicine. I'm Officer Abner, IUIC Augusta. Shalom, most high in Christ. Bless you all. Hey, Lord's will, y'all will get something out today's class. All right, so the title of today's class, Chosen for Your Trials. All right, Chosen for the Trials. All right, so a lot of us, we come into this truth and we think, hey, we done made it. Everything is all good. There's no, there's going to be no issues. Nothing's going to come up. I'm never going to fall. Never going to fall. Never going to have an issue. But the thing is, the actuality, the reality of the fact of the matter is when we go through trials and we go through affliction, that's when we're chosen. That's when we're chosen. That's what the Most High allows to come upon us to show when we are chosen. All right. And to see if we can continue fighting, we fit for the battle. All right, so the premise of this class, let me get Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 10. Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 10. Because you're going to go through trials. You're going to go through afflictions. You're going to go through hardship. You're going to go through issues. And the thing is, is that all of those things are set up to see if you're going to apply God's laws and commandments. To see if you're taking something in. You've been in this truth. You might catch something Year one, hell, you might catch something year three, year five, year six, year nine. You're going to catch it somewhere in this truth where you go through affliction and whether you're chosen or not will come out of the result of you being afflicted. And if you rebound, oh, you get emotional and you leave. You say, I'm done. Hey, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to do my own thing. You understand? I want to follow what's in my heart versus following what's in the heart of the Lord, what's in the mind of the Lord. You understand? Read. Isaiah chapter 48, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Behold, I have refined thee. Go ahead. Read that again. Behold, I have refined thee. Behold, I have refined thee. So a lot of us, we don't even look at the Lord putting us through affliction as being refined being purified you understand it's like we're purified when we go through different afflictions when we go through adversities all right read on but not with silver but not with silver all right so we're purified we're refined but not with silver go ahead i have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction i have what i have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. So when we go through the trials and when our body is afflicted, we have these hardships that, that we go through in this truth and we have uh, these different thoughts that come in our mind. Don't nobody like me. Don't nobody want to be around me. You understand? Uh, um, uh, some other things that come up. Oh, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to just uh, eat. I'm, I'm super fat. You understand? Nobody wants to be around me. I'm super skinny. Nobody want to be around me, you understand? Nobody cares about my growth and development. But the thing is, is that the Lord cares about us to afflict us. Read it again from the top. Behold, I have refined thee, uh -huh. but not with silver. I have refined thee, but not with silver. Go ahead. I have chosen thee. I have chosen thee. Go ahead. In the furnace of affliction. In the furnace of affliction. When it's hot. <laughs> when it's hot, you're going through that trial and it's hot. And you like things coming from left to right. And you like, damn, I didn't know, I didn't know all this was gonna happen. I didn't know uh, all this was in me still. And I gotta get it out. The Lord gotta get it out through those afflictions. You understand? Get Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 14. Ezekiel 22 and verse 14. And a lot of times that hot, that heat, that fire, we don't wanna go through. We don't wanna go through. We want to cry out to everybody in the world instead of crying out to the Lord. Go ahead. Read what you got. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 14. Uh-huh. Can thine heart endure? So the Lord want to know, can your heart endure? Can your mind, can you endure this thing? Can your mind endure and keep it together? Go ahead. Or can thine hands be strong? Or can thy hands be strong? You understand? That work that we do with our hands. This work that we put in the Bible is like, bro. You go five, six years, nine years, ten years in this truth, and you lose strength in your hands. You don't want to put in no more work. 
You understand? You done got battle fatigue. You understand? You done lost a grip on your sword. You done lost a grip on it. Read it again. Can thine heart endure? Can thy heart endure? Go ahead. Or can thine hands be strong? Or can thy hands be strong? Go ahead. In the days that I shall deal with thee. In a day what? That I shall deal with thee. So when we're going through these different things, the Lord is dealing with us. The Lord is dealing with us. He's like, yo, I want to see if you're going to make it out of this trial to see if you really want to serve me. Right? Read it again from the top, bro. Can thine heart endure? Can thy heart endure? Go ahead. Or can thine hands be strong? Or can thy hands be strong? In the days that I shall deal with thee. In the days that I shall deal with thee. Go ahead. I, the Lord, have spoken it uh -huh. and will do it. I, the Lord, have spoken it and will do it. All right, real quick. Let's get Hebrews 12 real quick, real quick, real quick. Hebrews 12. Because a lot of us, we like, yo, you know what? Hey, all this going through things, I don't know if I want this. I don't know if I want it, man. Hey, the, the way that brother spoke to me, uh, uh mm Nah, hey, in the world, I wouldn't deal with that. Ain't nobody coming up in my face. The way that sister spoke to me, mm, mm Oh, no. Not here, not today. You understand? We still got that, that old man mentality, how we want to deal with certain situations, right? But when we endure the afflictions, we endure hardship, the Lord is dealing with us. Read that, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 7. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 7. If ye endure chastening, uh -huh. God dealeth with you as with sons. So the afflictions, the hardship, the trials, the different things that we go through, if we endure it, the Lord dealeth with us as with sons. Go ahead. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? So what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Just like a natural father. If you have a care for your children, you're going to chastise your children. Hey, don't touch that stove. Hey, make sure that you, uh, back in the day, it was come in when the street lights come on, yes, sir. right? Stuff like that. It's like you get that chastisement. And when you don't, you want to push the envelope, what happened? You get dealt with. So a lot of times, and it's true, we don't realize certain things that we do, whether we slacking off from the work, whether we are uh, falling into our lust, into our sin, whether we are uh, not having fellowship with the brethren like we're supposed to. Those things are different things that it's like, yo, you falling off, you falling off. So the Lord will bring a trial upon you, an affliction upon you, so that you can be corrected, that you can be corrected, because that's what that ch chastisement is. That's what that affliction up. is. Read. But if you be without chastisement. But you in this truth, you ain't never go through no trial. You three, I ain't going through no trial. Everything's smooth sailing. You're five, everything's cool. You're eight, hey, everything's great. You're 10, Damn. everything's good. You're 15, I ain't had no trials. I'm good. The Lord loved me. I'm blessed. No, 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 no. Yo, you going through this thing, you don't have no affliction, nothing come upon you. Let's see what the Bible say you might be. Read. Where of all are partakers. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Read back. The beginning of verse 8. Yes, read sir. it again. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. But if ye be without chastisement. But if ye be without chastisement. Go ahead. Where of all are partakers. In which we are all partakers. We've all been partakers of affliction. We've seen leadership go through afflictions of all different levels. All different levels. So those right there are proof positive that, yo, the Lord loves them and are dealing with our leadership. You understand? Go ahead. Read. Then are ye bastards. Right. So if you don't have no affliction, no trials, no hardship, you might be a bastard. Might be a damn heathen. Damn. Go ahead. And not sons. And not sons. Right? So part of the problem, too, is that a lot of times we come into this truth and it's like, yo, we get this spirit on, a, on us to where it's like, yo, we don't want to be ashamed. You know, we don't want nobody to see different things that we deal with. We come into this thing and we're like, you know what? Um, you know, I want to be pleasing unto this man over here, the brother that said over, over me. You understand? Or we say, oh, I want to be pleasing to this sister that said over me in these responsibilities and be pleasing unto them. But the thing is, is that we're supposed to be pleasing unto the Lord. Hey, give, give, me, that, um, give me that video, that, uh, that man pleaser video. Mm-hmm. 
why, why are you getting that? Let me get Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 6. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Not with eye service uh -huh. as men pleasers. Not with eye service as men pleasers. Right? Go ahead. But as the servants of Christ. As the servants of Christ. So that's what we should be looking into coming into this truth. We're going to fix ourselves so we can properly serve Christ in righteousness. You understand? Come on. Doing the will of God Doing from the, the heart. Doing the what? The will of God from the heart. Doing the will of God from the heart. So us putting the will of God in our mind and doing it from the heart. Go ahead. Play that video. You got it? Yes. Yes. That's the one. It does have a little language, but um, hey, it's for edification. Because a lot of times it's like we come in the truth and we still have this spirit on us just like we was in Christianity, just like we was in uh, uh, Islam, just like we was in Buddhism. You understand? Go ahead. Go ahead. You got it? <laughs> Look at those idiots. Don't even know how to ride a donkey. Wow, what an asshole husband, making his wife walk while he rides. Oh my god, that poor animal! You cruel pieces of shit! <laughs> you cannot please everyone. Whatever you do, there will always be somebody who will criticize you. So, yo, you got to make sure that it's like, yo, when you're doing this work of the Lord, you're doing it for the Lord. You understand? The different offices that you're in, hey, yo, yo, as far as order and correction, do what you got to do. Do what you're supposed to do. You understand? Do it according to that order, right? But then it's like when you're going overboard and trying to be overly pleasing to people, it's like, yo, you you gonna run into a problem. You know, you're no longer doing it for the Lord. You're doing it for man, right? Get uh, Colossians chapter three and verse twenty three. Colossians three and twenty three. Colossians chapter three, verse twenty three. Mm -hmm. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily. As read it again. Colossians chapter three, verse twenty three. Uh huh. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily. Do it heartily. Go ahead. As to the Lord. Do it heartily as to the Lord. Read it again from the top. And whatsoever ye do. Whatsoever you do. Whatever your office is, you understand, you in the stewardship program, you um, you, 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 you treasury, you security, you kitchen, you children's room, whatever it is that yeah. you're doing in this truth, whatever work you're putting in. Go ahead. Read it again. And whatsoever ye do, uh -huh. do it heartily. Do it heartily. Go ahead. As to the Lord. As to the Lord. So you do it as to the Lord. Go ahead. And not unto men. And not unto men. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10. Right? Do it as unto the Lord, not as unto men. Right? So a lot of times it's like we end up in these different afflictions because we have that in our mind to we're doing things unto men and not unto the Lord. Right? Not to be pleasing unto the Lord. Read what you got. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. Uh-huh. Whatsoever thine hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. Do it all your yeah. strength, all your might. Right? Come on. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave. So, because when you die, you're done. You're done. You're done. You're done. Message. You understand? So all the work that you're doing it, doing it unto the Lord. Do it as unto the Lord, not as unto men. Right? Come on. Uh, let's get Revelations chapter 2, verse 4 through 5. All right? Revel so this is, this is one of the things that I myself, I had to learn. It's like going through a trial. It's like, yo, I, I had my trial that I went through. And it's like, man, as I'm going through, I'm like, Damn, what I'm doing. 
You understand? Look to leadership. I'm getting scriptures, things to meditate on, things to get my spirit right. And one of the main things is to always return back to your first love. You remember what you came into this truth for, right? If you don't, you need to remember. You understand? You remember how it was when you first came in? Bro, I remember, like, listening to classes. You listen to classes all day, all night. You understand? Yeah. You, you staying up late. It's like Deacon Asap bringing out scriptures. That's it's like, right. yo, you're listening to it. And it's like, yo, if, if you can't last and you can't stay up long, as long as Deacon Asap was, you'll fall asleep right there. You're going through scriptures. You're writing. You end up writing so much, you end up falling asleep. Bring you wake up. You, you get back to it. That's what it was, yeah. right? But go ahead and read this. We got to get back to that first love, family. When you're going through your trials, go back to your first love. Start watching classes constantly. Read this again. Revelations chapter 2, verse 4. Come on. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, uh -huh. because thou hast left thy first love. So sometimes we're in this truth. We running. We doing work. You might be going to blitzes. You might be having a camp every day, 100 days of camp, 50 days of camp, 30 days of camp. And you're doing the work, but what happens? You get battle fatigue. You understand? The only way you could get battle fatigue is if you're actually in battle. If, if you're just coming in, you ain't been on the street yet, yeah. you ain't been battle fatigue at all. You understand? You, you, it's that old man fighting against the new man that you're trying to develop and grow. You understand? I remember uh, uh, Deacon Malachi would bring out his like, yo, when you first come in the truth, when you first come in the truth, you look at you in the truth like your Bible, right? When you first come in the truth, you open up that page. This page, this right here on the left, that's that's how strong you are in the truth. That's how it is. You just come in the truth, right? And this right here on the right, that's where you're trying to get to. Damn. You only got that much righteousness in you. And it's like you think you're going through and you're fighting. No, 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 no. The fight just begun. The fight just begun. All right? Go ahead. Read what you got. Verse 5. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. Uh-huh. Remember from whence you are fallen. Go ahead. And repent. And do what? And repent. And repent. Read it again. Verse 4. Read it again. Verse 4. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Uh-huh. Because thou hast left thy first love. Thou hast left thy first love. Go ahead. Remember, therefore, from remember, whence. Remember, remember, remember how you were, writing your precepts in your Bible, uh, taking notes, <laughs> following class, reading, uh, listening to them over and over and over again. <laughs> you understand? That was the spirit that you was in when you first came in the door. Go. You got to get back in that same spirit. Run after this truth. Run after this righteousness. Run after this discipline, after this wisdom, after this spirit of Christ right here in this Bible. Read it. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. Go ahead. And repent. And repent. Don't think you're too good to repent. You should be constantly repenting. You should be dying daily. You understand? Getting yourself together daily. You fall, get back up. Fall, get back up. All right? Come on. And do the first works. Uh-huh. And do the first works. Go ahead. Or else, or else, I will come unto thee quickly, uh -huh. and will remove thy candlestick. And out. remove that candlestick. That's where you see brothers, they, they go through a trial, they go through a hardship, and they fall out this truth. You understand? They don't want to come back. They start smoking weed. They shaving off uh, uh, their whole beard. They got a little goatee now uh, with a chin strap. Or um, I don't know. They don't call it a runway or what. I don't know what it's called. But they, they, they chop up their beard. They're marring up their beard, right? Doing all kind of foolishness. All right? So let's see what that candlestick is. I right, said, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except ye repent. Get Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 27. Let's see what that candle is. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 27. This is the one you don't want. This is the one you don't want. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 27. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27. Mm -hmm. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. So, wait a minute. If we don't get ourselves right, we don't get back to that first love. The Lord can remove our spirit from us. Remove his spirit from Damn. us. 
right? We die. Die, die. Go ahead. Searching all the inward parts of the belly. Searching all the inward parts of the belly, your soul, your spirit, who you are as a man, right? Who you are and it's true for you're supposed to be, right? Hey, give me, um, go to uh, Luke chapter 2 and verse 37. This is what it made me think about. This is what it made me think about right here. Luke chapter 2 and verse 37. The 2 verse 37. Uh-huh. And she was a widow of about four score and that's, four years. That's Luke 2. And 37? I'm sorry, 35. Yes, sir. I'm looking at it and I say 37. Yes, sir. My apologies. Go ahead. Go ahead. Read that. Luke, Luke chapter, chapter 2 and verse 37. Verse 35. 35. Yes, sir. 35. I want 35. Come on. Now. You know what? I need a sip of coffee. That's what it is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hey, yo, y'all got y'all coffee, y'all green tea, your ginger tea, you understand what I'm saying? No, no, no sugar, you know what I'm saying? No sugar, no honey, you understand? You got your uh, black coffee with your MCT oil, your coconut oil, you know what I'm saying? Sip on that in the morning. Read that, verse 35. Yes, sir. Luke chapter 2, verse 35. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul uh -huh. also. That a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also. Right? Through our belly. Go ahead. That the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. That the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. May be revealed. So who you really are is exposed through those trials. Yeah. Through those trials. That's how you know what kind of brother you are in this truth. That's how you know what kind of sister you are in this truth. You understand? And as we're going through, we have to be like, you know what? Lord, please don't take your Holy Spirit away from me as I'm going through this trial. Get that in Psalms uh, 51 and verse 10. Psalms 51 and verse 10. And then I want Sirach 17. Psalms 51 verse 10. Psalms 51 verse 10. Mm -hmm. Create in me a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. Go ahead. And renew a right spirit within me. And renew a right spirit within me. Renew a right spirit within me. So a lot of times we don't know. We're going off, yo, we got an evil spirit on us, right? And we got to fix that thing. We want the Lord to renew a right spirit in us. Go ahead. Read. Cast me not away from thy presence. Cast me not away from thy presence. Go ahead. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Me, right? You got a Sirach 17, verse 25 and 26. Sirach Amen. chapter 17, verse 25. Return unto the Lord mm -hmm. and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Read it again. Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Mm-hmm. Make thy prayer before his face. Go ahead. And offend less. So, as we go on through this truth, we should be learning how to offend less. As we go through our trials, we realize, hey, the different things that I did before, Real. I don't need to go that way. You understand? So, you learn how to offend less. So, you put things in place to work on that spirit that you had. You understand? That spirit of uh, uh, whether it was a spirit of division, uh, a self will spirit, you just want to do your own thing. Uh, you had uh, variants, you understand? You had uh, a malicious thoughts, you understand? Offend less, you understand? Come on. Turn again to the most high. Turn again to the most high, go ahead. And turn away from iniquity. Turn away from iniquity. So you had that whoremonger spirit, turn away from that iniquity. Iniquity. You understand? You had that, uh, uh, that adulterous spirit, turn away from iniquity. You had that fornication spirit, turn away. You understand? You got put out the body for fornication, adultery. You understand? Any kind of uncleanness. Make sure that you get your spirit right. Learn how to offend less. Go ahead. For he will lead thee out of darkness uh -huh. into the light into of the health. Into the light of health. Go ahead. And hate thou abomination vehemently. And whatever abomination that you was in that caused you to go through your trial, hate that thing vehemently. You understand? That's the worst. You got to get away from it. You understand? That vehemently, that's with intense passion. 
hate that thing, right? All right, so uh, real quick, get um, Luke chapter 11 and verse 24. Luke chapter 11, verse 24. Luke chapter 11, verse 24. Mm -hmm. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man. Right, so you got to know, hey, you in this truth, you going to have many different unclean spirits that you got coming off of you. You understand? Coming off of you. But the thing is, is that it's not done. It's not done. You understand? We're going to see what the scriptures say. Read. He walketh through dry places. Mm hmm Seeking rest. Seeking rest. You're trying to find a new brother or sister to jump on. You understand? You had that spirit. It's been with you for a while. You coming into this truth. You understand? You got it off you, or you thought you got it off you for a minute, but it always looks for another spirit to inhabit, right? Another uh, soul to inhabit, another host to inhabit. Go ahead. And finding none, mm -hmm. he saith, I will return unto my house. He would do what? I will return unto my house mm -hmm. whence I came out. He will return into his house from whence he came. So he will always, that spirit will always try to come back to you. That adulterous spirit, that spirit of fornication, that spirit of division. You understand that the uh, spirit of self-will, that spirit of uh, theft, uh, thieving, you understand, or uh, stealing. You understand those different spirits, they're going to keep coming back, trying to test you to see where you at. See where you at. If it can't jump on another brother, that's how you know, yo, it's different spirits that try to run throughout the whole congregation. You try to run throughout the whole congregation, you got to keep your eyes open and dealing with that, right? But this particular spirit that you had on you is going to try to come back and find you, right? And to see if you're still in the spirit. See if you went back to your first love, you understand? Or if you left it empty, swept, and garnished. Go ahead. And when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. Uh-huh. Then goeth he and taketh to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And then he brings seven other spirits more wicked than himself, right? So empty, swept, and garnished. We're supposed to make sure that we constantly have Christ within us. Get Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. You understand? And the only way you have Christ in your spirit, you're constantly listening to classes. You're constantly reading. You're constantly studying. You understand? You're going over scriptures that pertain to your sin. You understand? Things that pertain to your trial or what you're going through, right? Go ahead. Read what you got. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Uh -huh. Behold, I stand at the door mm -hmm. and knock. Uh -huh. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him. So Christ is looking for us to open the door. You understand? Open up our minds and let him in. You understand? Let him come sup with us and deal with us, right? But we want to hold on to that, that sin of fornication. We want to hold on to that sin of adultery. We want to hold on to that sin of uncleanness or whatever have you. You understand? Whatever your sin is. A lot of us be trying to hold on to that thing. You understand? You, you, you're shy or bashful or whatever have you. Spirit of division. It's like, yo, open up the door. Let Christ in. If you constantly hearing classes, you constantly going to camp, you constantly putting in work as unto the Lord, hey, Satan won't be able to come in. But as soon as you start That's veering right. off, you allow Satan to come in. You understand? You allow Satan to come in. All right. Uh, let's get Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Put on the whole armor of God. You, you know what? Now, let's go to, uh, go to Psalms. Psalms 119 and verse 71. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me slow down. Let me slow down. Verse 71, sir? Uh, nope. Verse 67. Yes, sir. Psalms 119, verse 67. Psalms 119, verse 67. Uh-huh. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. So before we was afflicted, we went astray. You was doing your own thing. You understand? Thought everything was good, right? So before I was afflicted, I went astray. Go ahead. But now. But now. I... Now you're coming back. Now what? But now 
have I kept thy word? But now have I kept thy word. Jump down to verse 71. Verse 71. Uh Uh-huh. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. So we think our affliction is bad. No, it is good for me that I have been afflicted. You understand? Because if not, your soul will be removed. The Lord will remove his Holy Spirit from you. You'll be done. Done. Right? Read it again. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. That I have been afflicted. Go ahead. That I might learn thy statutes. That I might learn thy statutes. So once we go through affliction, that teaches us how we should apply God's laws and commandments. You understand? How we should keep his statutes. You understand that we may love the brotherhood. You understand that we may love to be afflicted and to go through trials. You understand? Because that's when the fight starts. That's when it all starts. You understand? Is when we're going through afflictions, right? Get Sirach chapter 2 and verse 1. Sirach chapter 2 and verse 1. So, Rock, chapter 2, verse 1. Uh-huh. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So, when we come to serve the Lord, we come in this truth, we prepare our soul for temptation. That's like that example. I showed the Bible. You understand that how, uh, how Deacon was bringing out. Yo, we have a little bit of righteousness when we first come in and a whole lot of righteousness we got to obtain. You understand? That means that we're more full of wickedness. You understand? So when we first come into this truth, it's like, yo, we got to get ourselves together, right? And we do that, and that's when the fight starts. That's when it all starts. You understand? But the scriptures just said, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptations. Right? Read. Set thy heart aright. Set your mind right. Get your mind right. Get your mind ready for the battle to know that you're going to go through these things. You're going to fall. You understand? You're going to stumble. You're going to fumble, but you have to get back up. Read. And constantly endure. Mm -hmm. And make not haste in time of trouble. And make not haste in time of trouble. So a lot of times, brothers and sisters think, hey, I I have this issue. I have this sin that I've been battling, I've been struggling with. And you know what? I'm done. If I fall into temptation, I fall into this trial, I'm done. Kaput. Right? Right? But read this. Let's see what the scripture says. We're going to come back. Hold that. We're going to come back to that. Give me uh, Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 16. Proverbs 24 and verse 16. Read that. That's what you got to remember. This right here. Read that. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. Go ahead. For a just man falleth seven times. For a just man falleth seven times. Seven times, just seven times right here is just that number. It's not a number that you should calculate. All right, how many times do I got to fall? Okay, I got uh, seven, seven times. All right, damn. Subtract the three, uh, add the five. It shouldn't be that. Don't try to calculate how many times you fall. You understand? Just know a just man. If you're looking to serve the Lord, you're applying God's laws and commandments, you're going to have things come upon you. You're going to have temptations that come to try you. You understand? And those things are to see if you're going to serve the Lord, right? So it says, for a just man falleth seven times, go ahead, and riseth up again. That's key point. That's key point. Riseth back up again. Go ahead. But the wicked. But, but the wicked, that evil brother, that evil sister, go ahead. Shall fall into mischief. Shall fall into mischief. Now nah, it's oh, he doing all kind of things. You understand? The sister got her OnlyFans. The, bro- the brother, he- he's selling dope to his people. You understand? Do all kind of wickedness. Or going straight back to the, uh, the, the, the whorehouse or back to the strip club. Or you going back to the adulteress. You know what I'm saying? Or the adulterer. Uh, adulterer. You know what I'm saying? You're doing all this evil. You know what I'm saying? You know what? I done fail. I'm going to go back and defile my temple. I'm going to go ahead and smoke this weed. You understand? Man, I still got the, the weed man on speed dial. Why you got the weed man on speed dial? <laughs> I'm sorry. That's <laughs> I mean, you ain't repenting, bro. <laughs> it shouldn't be like, yo, you got so such an easy access. You got such easy access to all your sin. That shouldn't be the case, yo. That shouldn't be the case. All right, go ahead. Read that again, man. Yes, sir. For a just man falleth seven times. Uh-huh. And riseth up again. Go ahead. But the wicked. But the wicked. Go ahead. Shall fall into mischief. Shall fall into mischief. Let's go back to Sirach 2. 
All right, come on. So Rock, chapter two, verse, you want to pick up at? Yes, pick up where we left off at. Oh, verse speed three. Speed up a little bit. Go ahead. Cleave unto him and uh -huh. depart not away. Cleave unto the Lord and depart not away. Go ahead. That thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Right. So even though you're going through these trials, you can get the kingdom eventually by fixing yourself, by constantly getting back up. Come on. Whatsoever is brought upon thee. 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 This is the hard part right here. This is the hard yeah. part. Go ahead. Whatsoever. Whatsoever could be anything. 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 Whatever your trial is, whatever your struggle is, whatever your hardship is, whatever come upon thee. Go ahead. Take cheerfully. Take cheerfully. That's hard. That's hard, but we got to apply it. We got to apply it, family. We got to apply it. Go ahead. Read. And be patient. And be what? Be patient. And be what? Be patient. Yo, and be patient, bro. Hey, I'm going to tell you uh, one thing Captain Barnabas say, yo, you going through your trial, it's like call, call the brothers or the sister that's appointed over you, right? But don't be calling everybody. Don't be calling yeah. everybody. You're going to get into speaking evil. And more than likely, when you do that, you're looking for somebody to comfort you, to comfort you in your foolishness. And the thing is, is this. The Lord already put everything in place that everybody that you need to contact, you yeah. in contact with. You understand? Those that are going to build your spirit up, strengthen you. You understand? In the word of God. Go ahead, read. And be patient. Uh-huh. And be patient. When thou you understand? Art don't try to Don't try to force the course of the river. Don't try to force it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm doing this now. I'm giving alms now. I'm doing this now. I'm, I'm doing all these different things now. Those things, yo, you should have been done doing before. You understand? You put into practice those things that, yo, go back to your first love. Get your spirit right. Work on those different sins. Focus on scriptures dealing with your issue. Go ahead. And be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. When thou art changed to a lower state, so whether you put out of the body or you lose your rank. You understand? Or sisters, you put out of the kitchen or you put out of, uh, put off of security. You understand? These are things right here that we go through afflictions, we go through trials. Brothers and sisters don't like to apply. Don't like to apply. I want to go talk to everybody else. I want to go complain. You understand? Now you're in the evil speaking. You're in the evil speaking. You're doing all kind of foolishness, right? Got to Peter say, hey, yo, put away all that evil speaking. You understand? Those thoughts of malice, right? All right. You, you read verse 5? Uh, I'm about to start verse 5. Yes, sir. Read verse 5. Yes, sir. For gold is tried in the fire, mm -hmm. and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. In the furnace of adversity. What that sound like? Hmm. That sound like Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 10. Let's read that again. <laughs> Let's read that again. Let's read that one more time, right? I, Isaiah chapter 48, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. Uh -huh. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. You understand? We got to look forward to these things and know that they're coming, family. Right? So let's get, uh, get Hosea chapter 5 and verse 15. Hosea 5 and verse 15. Hosea chapter 5, verse 15. Uh huh. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge. Till they do what? Acknowledge their offense. That's another thing. Brothers and sisters have a hard time doing. Yeah. Acknowledging our offense. Acknowledging our offense. You know what? Yes, sir. I, I was self willed. I did what I wanted to do instead of following the blueprint, instead of following the guidelines. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir, I did have that spirit of lust on me. I did have that spirit of adultery on me. You know what? I used to deal with that back in the world. Yes, you know what? I do have that spirit of, of lying on me. So I'm, I'm used to lying. I'm used to deceiving to get my way. Oh, You know what? I, I do have that spirit of stealing on me. That's why it's like I, I took X amount of out items from the kitchen. You understand? Because I had in my mind to where I used to steal. You understand? So all those different things in our minds 
we have to acknowledge our offense. As Israel, that's what we do. That's what separates us from the Christian church 100% is that we acknowledge our offense, our offense, and we get it right. We start applying God's laws and commandments again and again and again and again. You understand? That's what it's supposed to be, acknowledging your offense and moving forward, forward, all right? Not forward, not forward being hard to deal with because you don't want to deal with your offense, but being moving forward in the wisdom and knowledge of God, desiring the discipline of the Lord, desiring his wisdom, all right? Get uh, 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 12. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 12. So, brothers and sisters, hopefully you get something out of this class, man. It's like we got different things that come upon us, different suffering. But all these things right here, it shows us that we're chosen in those afflictions. You understand? Go ahead, read. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Uh-huh. Be loved. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial. So don't think it's strange you're going through fiery trials. You know what I'm saying? You're going through things to afflict you. You understand? That's causing you pain to, to refine you, to help you to get rid of that old man, that old Bring woman. Go ahead. Which is to try you. Which is to what? To try you. To try you. you. That's the only way you could be known. That's the only way your true spirit can be known is that you go through a trial, you go through affliction. Because without that, you could be man-pleasing and show this, uh, this mask, this disguise of who you are. Instead of being like, you know what, this is who I truly am. I have these struggles. I have these issues. But you know what? I'm here to serve the Lord. You understand? That's what you got to do. Come on. As though some strange thing happened unto you. Right. You think it's something strange that happened to you. No, it ain't nothing strange. We all go through afflictions. You understand? If not, then we're bastards. But we all go through afflictions. We all go through trials. You understand? Go ahead. But rejoice. And a lot of brothers and sisters think that, hey, leadership don't understand. You don't understand? No. Leadership does understand because leadership has gone through different trials, different afflictions. Yeah. You understand? Different hardships coming up in this truth. You might not yeah. know about all of them, but they have. You understand? They've been battle tested. And you got to know that. The way the scriptures come out in, yeah. in Israel United Christ and IUIC, bro, ain't, ain't no way that these men ain't chosen of God. You understand that these ain't the guys. You understand? You got to know. You got to know that. Go ahead, read. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings. Right. That we are partakers of Christ's sufferings, right? So it's like, yo, you got to know. Hey, right here in Israel United in Christ, we are the guys. Because I've been through affliction. You understand? It's like, yo, you got to think about those things, yo. Be like, hey. You're going through afflictions. You're going through trials. Yo, you are chosen of the Lord. You come back. You get back up. Yo, you adjust. That's you adjust. Right? But if you fall into mischief, then you consider wicked. You fall into mischief. You stay there on. You don't repent. You don't, you don't acknowledge your offense. Yo, you are wicked as hell. Right? But when you acknowledge your offense, you say, you know what? Yes, I did do this. You know I said? Yes, this is what I said. Yeah. Yes, this is what I did. You understand? Those are the things that come up. To show, a hey, who you are. You understand? Then it's like, yo, you the guys. You understand? You the gods on this earth that's set up to come back and to Bring judge this earth. That the word of God will constantly be in your mouth. You understand? And not give this place no rest yeah. from hearing the word of God. You understand? Always bring it out. That's what it should be. Go ahead. Come on. That when his glory shall be revealed. Uh-huh. That when his glory shall be revealed. Go ahead. You may be glad also with exceeding joy. You may be glad also with exceeding joy. Exceeding joy. Come on. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ. If you reproach for the name of Christ. Go ahead. Happy are ye. Happy are ye. Right? Those days are going to be coming. Right? Come on. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. Come on. On their part. He is evil spoken of, mm -hmm. but on your part, he is glorified. Right. So when we when we go out into the world and we're dealing with people, the things that we go through for the, the, the for the namesake of the Lord, a lot of those things is like it's evil spoken of. You understand? Christ is evil spoken of, right? But go ahead. But as far as dealing with us being in this truth, on our part, he is glorified. 
So we know that hey, we're, we're dealing with a lot of things. It's like, yo, you had brothers that knew that they were Israelites. And you had Pharisees and Sadducees, and they was going against the, the, uh, the disciples, right? And Christ was evil spoken of. But in us keeping Christ, you know what I'm saying, walking in the spirit of Christ and acknowledging his sacrifice for our sins, you understand, it, we are glorified. He is glorified in us as we walk after his example, as we walk in his wisdom. Go ahead. But let none of you suffer. But at, let none of you suffer. Go ahead. As a murderer. As a murderer. You understand? That's how we know it ain't just dealing with our own personal trials that we deal through. It's gonna. It's also dealing with, hey, when uh, we're on the streets teaching us being shot, stabbed. You understand? Uh, them breaking into our house. You understand? Just like just like going into um, uh, in in Second Ezra sixteen. You understand all those afflictions that's going to come during the time of insurrection, right? We know that that's going into this as well. Us being persecuted by having the spirit of Christ on us and teaching this word, right? But go ahead. But we're using it for this example and dealing with us in our trials. Go ahead. Come on. Or as a thief. Or as a thief. Or as an evildoer. As an evildoer. Or as a busybody. Or as a busybody. Go ahead. In other men's matters. In other men's matters. You're carrying around gossip and murmuring and different things like that, right? Sirach chapter 27 and verse 5. Sirach 27 and verse 5. Let's get that. Sirach chapter 27, verse 5. The furnace proveth the potter's vessels. The furnace proveth the potter's vessel. So those trials of affliction shows who you are. Who you are. What you're made of. You understand how most high God created you. All right? Come on. So the trial of man is in his reasoning. Uh-huh. The trial of man is in his reasoning. So those things, a lot of times we're afflicted by different things that are going on in our own minds, right? And those things that we go through and those things that we might become self-willed on, it's like, yo, we go through that trial to fix ourselves, all right? Get, um, get Acts chapter 20. And you know what? No, get Amos chapter 5 and verse 14. Amos chapter 5 and verse 14. Amos chapter 5, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Seek good. Seek what? Seek good. Go ahead. And not evil. And not evil. Go ahead. That ye may live. That ye may do what? Live. That ye may live. Right? So seek good and not evil that ye may live. Go ahead. And so the Lord, uh -huh. the God of hosts, shall be with you as shall what? ye have spoken. Shall be with you as ye have spoken. Go ahead. Hate evil. Right. So the evil that you do, hate that evil. Hate that evil. Let it go. All right. Get rid of it. Go ahead. And love the good. And love the good. Love the commandments. Go ahead. And establish judgment in the gate. Go ahead. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. Right. So we want the Lord's grace, right? We want his mercy, right? So we should think upon the good things versus relying and thinking upon evil things, right? Especially if we're going through our trial. Don't think, oh, I'm going through this trial. Don't nobody like me. Don't nobody want me around. You understand? Oh, you know what? Uh, 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 I'm going to do this work. And I'm going to be glorified. First, it's no, 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 no. Think on good things of the Lord that uh, think, it said, hate evil and love good and establish judgment in the gates. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. You understand? Being gracious unto us, unto the children of Israel. You understand? So let's get... Uh, Let's get Romans chapter 8 and verse 35. You understand? Know let's let's deal with some of this 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 grace and mercy, right? Let's deal with some of that. Come on. Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Uh-huh. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? So when we're going through our trials. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall separate us? Go ahead. Shall tribulation? Shall tribulation? Shall your trial? Separate you from the love of God? Go ahead. Or distress. Or distress. 
Or persecution? Or persecution. Right? The day of insurrection? Is, is it going to be that that separates from the uh, love of God? No. Go ahead. Or famine? Or famine. Or nakedness? Or nakedness. Or peril? Or peril. Or sword? Or sword. Go ahead. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. Uh-huh. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Right. So we know, hey, that day is coming. Right? That day is coming. Right? But go ahead. Read on 37. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors. In all these things we are more than conquerors. We can overcome our sin. You understand? We can overcome the fiery trial. You understand? We could take it cheerfully. We could take it cheerfully and deal with it in the right way. You understand? Come on. Through him that loved us. Right. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Right? Let's get, uh, get Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11. Come on. Put on the whole armor of God. Go ahead. What does it say? Put on the whole armor of put God. Put on the whole armor of God. Put on all God's laws and commandments. You understand? Some brothers say, hey, I don't deal with this. Some sisters say, I don't deal with that. But you know you know what? You don't know which way that Satan's going to come after you. You understand? You don't know <laughs> what way your mind, that old man, is going to try to trick you to fall into your old sins. You understand? Go ahead. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Right, so that, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You understand? Those wiles, those tricks, those snares. Because I'm going to tell you, hey, some things are going to be straightforward. And you be like, you know what? No, I ain't doing that. You understand? No, I ain't doing that. It, yo, you used to be in the spirit of adultery. Sister keep coming up. You make a comment to the sister. Hey, sis, you need to don't do this, that, and other. Yes, daddy. And like, Oh, Lord. Uh, I'm, no, I'm... <laughs> I, I know. Huh? <laughs> you understand? Or you say, uh, uh, hey, sis, you need to this, that, and other. Okay, yeah, I do whatever you say. Oh, no, I, hold on. I, I need to get cow. out of here. I need to move, right? Sometimes that don't work. That don't work no more, right? You get built up. Now it's like, oh, I'm going to come another way. You know what? I'm going to come another way. I'm going to come through flattery. You understand? Oh, I'm going to come. I'm going to be at this spot. I know he at this spot certain time, times of the week. <laughs> certain days of the week, you at the track. And it's like, yo, you go there religiously. Then it end up being sisters that you ain't never seen before at the track running in some provocative clothes. You understand? Or at the gym exercising in provocative clothes. You understand? Most of the time, hey, ain't nobody in there but dudes. But then at this particular time, when you're going through, you struggling, you understand, whether it be, yo, something going on at home, something you have issues with the brothers, you know what I'm saying? And it could be vice versa for the sister. The, the, you, you're trying to get yourself right. The brother come up, and he all smooth and suave and stuff. And now, hey, you done fall into your temptation. You done fell into your sin. You understand? Those are the things that happen. If Satan can't get you one way, he coming another way. So realize it's wiles or tricks, snares, strategies, strategies. We always think Satan going to come one way. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get him back in the weed smoking. But you know what? I'm not going to start with the weed. I'm not going to come straight at him with the weed. I'm going to come at him with uh, depression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. I'm going to hit him with depression. He's going to get so depressed that he's going to go looking for comfort. Hmm, what used to come? The weed used to comfort him. But you know what? Now it ain't going to be in the form of weed. I'm, I'm going to let somebody offer him some candy. Yeah, some gummies. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to get him back into that. He going to taste it, then he going to think about how it used to be, and that's where he going to get back into the weed. I'm going to have, you know what I'm saying, somebody approach him to where it's like, yo, he back in, uh, uh, he back in this area. Oh, man, I ain't, seen you in, I ain't seen you in the hood in a while. Where you at? I want to get in contact with you. You understand? It's going to be different things that happen like that. An uh, ex call, uh, 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 a former close friend call, a family member you ain't talked to in years call. You understand? Or it, it could be, like I said earlier, that flattery. Oh, you're doing something, you're trying to grow and be progressive, but, yo, you allow different things to come upon you and certain spirits to be around you to where now you're falling back into your sin. You're falling back into different spirits that you used to deal with. You understand? Hey, they saw, hey, he ain't spending that much with Christ. 
She ain't, she ain't spending that much time with Christ. Dang. Dang empty sweat, then swept and garnished. So you know what? I'm going to come back in. I'm, you know, I'm going to see what's going on here. Oh, man, this thing nice. Let me bring them other spirits in. Hey, yo, hey, yo, yo, hey, party over here. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, the room open. It's an open house. Let's go. Right? That's what them spirits trying to do. All right? Let's get Psalms chapter 91 and verse 14 and 15. Psalms 91, 14 and 15. Psalms chapter 91, verse 14. Uh-huh. Because he hath set his love upon me, mm -hmm. therefore will I deliver him. Right, because you have set. Read it again. Because he hath set his love upon me. Right, because he has set his love upon me. Right, Christ set his love upon us. Go ahead. Therefore will I deliver him. Therefore will he deliver us. Really? Will he deliver us from our affliction. Deliver us from our sins. Go ahead. I will set him on high uh -huh. because he have known my name. I will set him on high because he have known my name. Read. He shall call upon me. He shall what? He shall call upon me. No, he shall call up, uh, upon the, the, the brother that he used to get comfort from or the sister he used to get comfort from or the weed man. No, he said what? He shall call upon me. He shall call upon the Lord. Go ahead. And I will answer him. Read. I will be with him in trouble. So a lot of times we don't even think about that. We're in these laws and commandments. We have an issue. We have a trial that we go through. Yo, the Lord is with us. The Lord is with us, helping us through those different things. Come on. I will be with him in trouble. Uh-huh. I will deliver him and honor him. Right. I shall deliver him and honor him. All right. Let's get, let's get Psalms 103. And verse 8. Psalms 103 and verse 8. Right? So, regardless of what we got to go through, yo, we're going to have to repent of our sins. We're going to have to first acknowledge our sins. You understand? We're going through that furnace of adversity. We have to acknowledge our sins. Get ourselves together. You understand? Acknowledge our sins. Repent from those sins. You understand? And go back to our first love. Going after this word. You understand? Going after this wisdom in God in the spirit of Christ. Go ahead, read what you got. Psalms chapter 103. You said verse 8, sir. Yes, sir. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. The Lord is merciful. The Lord is what? Merciful. Merciful. Go ahead. And gracious. And gracious. The Lord is merciful up. and gracious. We got to remember that. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Read. Slow to anger. Slow to anger. He give us chance after chance after chance. Trial after trial after trial to get ourselves together. You understand? We should always be thankful to the Lord for that. You understand? That we get opportunity to repent. Go ahead. And plenteous in mercy. And plenteous in mercy. Plenty of chance to repent. Plenteous in mercy. Read. He will not always chide. Mm -hmm. Neither. He will not always chide. So when, when that, that child is talking about to speak out in anger. You understand? displeased rebuke you understand so sometimes we get that rebuke and then sometimes we get compassion right like it speaks of in jude all right come on read neither will he keep his anger forever neither will he keep his anger forever so when we acknowledge our offense we acknowledge our offense and repent you understand it's like yo the lord is not gonna keep his anger against us forever so we got to get that out of our mind. We think, oh, man, I went through this trial. I fell. The Lord would never be gracious to me again. He would never show mercy. No, no, he will. He will. He will. But we have to acknowledge our offenses. You understand? <laughs> because he chose us in the trials. That's what we are chosen. Go ahead. He have uh, not. Uh, that, that was it. That was it. That was it. All right. Uh, get Sirach. Get Sirach chapter 30 and verse 14. So rock chapter 30, verse 14. Uh-huh. Better is he, the poor, being sound and strong of constitution. I'm sorry. Better yeah. is he, better is the poor, being sound and strong of constitution. Right. So being strong in your body, right? Better is the poor, being sound and strong of constitution. Go ahead. 
than a rich man that is afflicted in his body. Than a rich man that's afflicted in his body. Why am I bringing this up? I'm bringing it up because sometimes when we go through these different trials, we have the spirit of depression on us. We have the spirit of depression. And a lot of us, we were depressed and we end up overeating. That's how a lot of us get overweight because you're depressed in your mind through different adversities, different trials, different afflictions. And sometimes brothers get that when they come into the truth. They go through a trial and it's like now they're sitting in that depression. Like the scripture before, we, didn't, we, don't, we don't realize that it's like, yo, the Lord will be merciful unto us if we acknowledge our offense and repent. All right? Come on, read. Health and good estate of body are above all gold. Uh-huh. And a strong body above infinite wealth. And a strong body above infinite wealth. Jump down to verse 25. Verse 25. A cheerful and good heart will have care of his meat and diet. Right. So a cheerful and good heart would have care of his meat and diet. So when, when you're going through trials, if you don't take it cheerfully and you allow that depression to come on you, then it's like, yo, you start overeating snacking, doing all kind of things that's going to gonna take your body that's going to defile the temple, right? Cause plaque to build up in your arteries, different issues like that. That happens as you go through and you don't realize that, you know what? The Lord is with me. He's going to help me through this trial, help me through this hard place in my life. You understand? But when your mind is cheerful, you're going to have a care of that beaten diet and not going to fall into depression and start overeating. You understand? And eating out of emotion. That's how people get into that emotional eating type thing, right? That's what it is. All right? Get Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 10. Ecclesiastes 11 and verse 10. I think that's what I want. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 10. Uh-huh. Therefore, remove sorrow from thy heart mm -hmm. and put away evil from thy flesh. Right says, therefore, remove sorrow from your heart and put away evil from thy flesh. You understand? Because that depression, it is no good. Put that sorrow away from you. You're going through trial, take it cheerfully. Know that, yo, you are chosen. You understand? The Lord is going to deal with you as a son when you come yeah. out of this thing. That's what the chastisement is for. So remove yeah. the sorrow. Remove the pain, the hardship. You understand? You're afflicting yourself in your own mind. All right, put away from that. Move away from that. All right, let's get Matthew chapter 10. You know what? No, let's get uh, Romans chapter 5 and verse 3. Romans 5 and 3, that's what I want. Romans chapter 5, verse 3. Uh-huh. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. We do also. what? We do what? Glory and tribulations also. Glory and tribulations also. Go ahead. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And we got to notice that tribulation, that trial, it worketh patience, patience, patience. Wait on the Lord. Think of the different things of the Lord. You understand? Go ahead. And patience, experience. Patience, experience. Now you got the experience. You understand? Now you got the experience that the Lord will deliver you. You understand? The Lord will be gracious. Go ahead. Come on. And experience hope. And experience hope. Go ahead. And hope maketh not ashamed. Uh-huh. And hope maketh not ashamed. So when you have hope for the kingdom of the Lord, you shouldn't be ashamed. You understand? You fall, you get back up. You understand? Just man fall seven times and rise it back up again. 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 And again and again. All right. Go ahead. Read on. Because the love of God. Is shed abroad in our hearts. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. Go ahead. By the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. By the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. We know we got the Holy Ghost. We got the Holy Spirit, right? Because we keep God's laws and commandments. That's what it is, right? All right. Give me Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 24. Isaiah 45 and 24. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 24. Mm -hmm. Surely shall one say in the Lord, I have righteousness uh -huh. and strength. So in the Lord, we have righteousness and strength. You understand? We have righteousness and strength in the Lord. Go ahead. 
even to him shall man come. Mm -hmm. And all that are in incensed against him shall be ashamed. Right. And all those that come against us shall be ashamed. You understand? Shall be ashamed. Get um get uh Second Corinthians chapter thirteen and verse five. So we are going through our trials. It should always be an examination process that takes place. Always examine yourself to see what it is you're dealing with. You understand? That's how you get that to that point to acknowledging your offense because you're realizing that yo, yeah, I, I I am wicked. I do have these different thoughts in my mind. I have evil thoughts to plague my mind. You understand? So you have to examine yourself. Go ahead, read. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Uh huh. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Mm -hmm. Prove your own self. Do what? Prove your own self. Prove your own self by getting back up. Prove your own self by getting back up in the trial and the affliction. All right? When you go through the tribulation, read. Know ye not your own self. Know ye not your own self. Go ahead. How that Jesus Christ is in you. Except you be reprobate. Except you be reprobate. Except you think your evil that you're doing is right. It's yeah. acceptable with God. You understand? And it shouldn't be that. Get Sirach chapter 18 and verse 20. Sirach 18 and verse 20. Sirach chapter 18 verse 20. Mm -hmm. Before judgment, examine thyself. Right. So before judgment, before the day of the Lord, you understand the next time you see the trial coming, you, you overcome your trial. The next time you see particular things start happening, examine yourself. You understand? As you see things approaching and as you're going through, before that judgment, examine yourself. You understand? Come on. And in the day of visitation, thou shalt find mercy. You see that? And in the day of vis visitation, before the day of the Lord, you shall have mercy. You shall have mercy. All right? Get uh, Sirach chapter 14. No, you know what? Uh, not yet, not yet. Get Psalms chapter 118 and verse 8. Psalms 118 verse 8. Psalms chapter 118 verse 8. Uh-huh. It is better to trust in the Lord. It is what? It is better to trust in the Lord uh -huh. than to put confidence in man. So it's better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in man. You're right? You should always have the trust in the Lord. The Lord is going to bring you through. You understand? He's going to bring you through your trial. Don't rely on somebody else. Don't, don't rely on uh, uh, somebody holding your hand through the trial. You understand? Put your trust in the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord. Go ahead. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Uh-huh. Jump up to verse 6. Verse 6. The Lord is on my side. Uh-huh. I will not fear. Right. What, what can man do unto me? Right. So the Lord is on your side. What, what should you fear? You understand that man could do unto you. Right. Read. The Lord taketh my part uh -huh. with them that help me. Mm -hmm. Therefore, shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. Shall I see my desire upon them that hate me? Read. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. All right. Get uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 26. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 26. Matthew chapter 10, verse 26. Uh-huh. Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed mm -hmm. and hid that shall not be known. All right, read. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. Uh-huh. And what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. Read. And fear not them which kill the body, mm -hmm. but are not able to kill the soul. Read. But, but rather fear, fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in right. hell. Right. So the thing is, coming out of our trial, make sure that you keep in mind to fear the Lord. Fear 
the Lord. Fear the Lord. Right, the more that you fear the Lord, it's like the more that you will deal right with your brothers and with your sisters. You understand? The more you will be able to identify and to examine yourself when you're going through it. You understand? That you're able to acknowledge your offense. You fear the Lord, you're able to be like, you know what? I acknowledge this defense that I had. This is where I fell off. All right? This is where I need to stand back up and get myself together. Right? So you fear the Lord, not man. You understand? Not trying to uh, uh, please men and do what you want to do, thinking that it's going to be pleasing to the Lord. No. Seek to please Most High God. You understand? In the spirit of Christ. All right. Read that again. Verse 28. Mm -hmm. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Uh Uh-huh. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Right. Fear him that's able to kill soul and and body in hell. All right. Let's go to uh, Sirach chapter 14 and verse 11. Sirach chapter 14 and verse 11. Sirach chapter 14, verse 11. My son, according to thy ability, do good to thyself. According to thy ability, do good to thyself. So, yo, do good to yourself. Do good to yourself. Study, pray, and apply. You understand? Meditate on how can you apply this scripture? How could I apply what the fear of the Lord is teaching me? How can I apply to keep myself out of iniquity? You understand? Read it again. My son. According to thy ability, Uh do good to thyself. Do good to thyself. Do good to thyself. All right? So a lot of times it's like we'll be going through things and we forget to take care of ourselves. Take care of yourself. Take care of your body. Take care of your mind. All right? Read. Read. And give the Lord his due offering. All right? And give the Lord his due offering. Come on. Remember that death will not be long in coming Mm -hmm. and that the covenant of the grave is not showed unto thee. Right. So, you know, death is coming. So you have to make sure that you examine yourself, that you're in the fear of the Lord before that death comes, before that death comes. You understand? So that you can have that hope. You understand? You went through that tribulation. You have that patience. You have that experience. You have that (laughs) hope. And that hope make it not a shame because you know that the kingdom is coming. You understand? So even if you are if you are put to death or you die, you know, yo, I got my spirit right. You understand? I overcame. You understand? I was getting myself right with the Lord. Hey, that's what it's about. Do good to yourself. All right? Jump down to verse 20. Verse 20. Blessed is the man that does meditate good things. That does wisdom. what? That doth meditate good things in wisdom. Blessed is the man that doeth meditate good things in wisdom. So on your mind should be the righteousness of God. You understand? It shouldn't be, I'm depressed, I'm feeling bad, I've been afflicted. No. Meditate on the things of the Lord. Meditate on good things, God's laws and commandments. Come on. And the reasoneth of holy things by his understanding. And the reasoneth, and that reasoneth of holy things by his understanding. So, you regaining yourself, regaining your footing, keeping God's laws and commandments, yeah. meditating on those good things, you understand, that you get out of understanding, out of keeping the commandments. Meditate on those things. When you do that, the word of God just said you are blessed. Blessed is the man that doeth meditate good things in wisdom. In wisdom. Right? Go ahead. Uh, read. He that considereth her ways in his heart. Right. When you consider the ways of wisdom in your mind, go ahead. Shall also have understanding in her secrets. You'll start having understanding of the secrets of wisdom. You understand? That's what you want right there. That's what you want. You don't want to be like, you know what, you're flitting yourself in your mind. You're holding on to all kind of foolishness, and, and you're having these repetitive thoughts in your mind instead of repeating God's word in your mind, repeating the commandment. All right, I should love my neighbor as myself. 
all right? Um, remove sorrow far from me, okay? Um, I need to be doing these things on a daily basis to take care of my body, my temple, my spirit, right? Come on, read. Go after her as one that traceth. Go after wisdom as one that traceth. Go ahead. And lie in wait in her ways. And lie in wait in her ways. Like you're hunting wisdom. Like you're hunting for wisdom. Go after it. You understand? Go <laughs> after this wisdom. You understand? That's how you keep yourself right with the Lord. You understand? All right. Let's get... Uh, All right, meditate. Can we pull up uh, the definition of meditate? Pull up the definition of meditate. My bad, IT. I should have. I should have uh, had you pull it up earlier. Meditate. Do you have the uh, Merriam-Webster or Google? Which one? Let's let's see what you got. Meditate on the wisdom of Lord of the Lord. So it says, Blessed is the man that doeth meditate good things in wisdom, and that reasoneth of holy things by his understanding. Meditate. Think deeply or focus one's mind for a period of time. Think deeply or focus one's mind for a period of time. For a period of time. It's not, oh, just real quick. You understand? Um, you know what? I'm just going to think about it for like a minute. No. Think about it. Meditate on it constantly. How do I do this? How do I accomplish this? All right? Read the, the, where the, little, uh, the little point at. Uh, think deeply. Yes, sir. Think deeply or carefully about something. Right. Think deeply or carefully about something. Let's read some of those synonyms. Yes, sir. Contemplate. Think about. Mm -hmm. Consider. Consider. Go ahead. Ponder. Contemplate. Uh-huh. Uh, weigh up. Reflect. 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 So that was that was uh, the definition I seen earlier is to engage in contemplation or reflection. Reflect. Go ahead. Deliberate. To deliberate. Uh, mull over. Maul over. Uh, chew the cud. Chew the <laughs> <laughs> you chew the cud. Chew the cud on that thing. All right. Go ahead. Be in a thoughtful state. Be in a thoughtful state. Uh-huh. Be lost in thought. Okay. Lost in thought. Okay. 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 All right. That's good. That's good. That's good. The plan mentally consider. Plan mentally consider. So sometimes just having in your mind how you're going to deal with different issues, that helps. That's part of meditation. You understand? Sometimes we don't even think about, all right, what am I going to do when these things come upon me? All right? So uh, let's go to Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3. You know what? Before that, let's get, let's get Joshua 1 and 8. Let's get Joshua 1 and 8. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Uh-huh. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Uh-huh. But thou shalt meditate. Thou shalt meditate, contemplate, consider, plan. You understand? Even, even with dealing with our trials and you have different things come upon you. Consider, if this is the situation that I'm in, how am I going to handle myself in this situation? You understand? Come on. Therein day and night, mm -hmm. and th that thou mayest observe to do. That you may observe to do. Go ahead. According to all that is written therein. According to all that is written therein. Go ahead. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Go ahead. And then thou shalt have good success. And thou shalt have good success. So in our meditation... In our meditation, contemplating over the scriptures, considering the scriptures, chewing the cud, deliberating, you understand, having those different things in our mind that are written in this Bible for us to learn. 
in the spirit of Christ. You understand? Meditate on those things, how we can overcome, you understand, our iniquity, our sins. You understand? Because the trials are coming. The tribulation are coming. The temptation is coming. You understand? But it's all to make sure that you are chosen. You understand? Go ahead. Uh, go back to Isaiah, Isaiah 26 and 3. Isaiah 26 and verse 3. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. Uh-huh. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Read it again. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, mm -hmm. whose mind is stayed on thee. Right. The Lord will keep us in perfect peace when our mind is on him, when we're constantly meditating on him, on his word, on his scripture, on his wisdom. You understand? Come on. Because he trusteth in thee. Because he trusteth in thee. Right? Because we trust in the Lord. He will keep our mind at perfect peace, perfect peace. You understand? We'll start to have that in our spirit, in our mind, and not worry about the things that we used to worry about. You understand? Worrying about how to how to please men or I'm going to be ashamed if I bring this out, if I say. Don't worry about that. Put your trust in the Lord. Go ahead. Come on. Trust ye in the Lord Trust forever. ye in the Lord forever. Go ahead. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. You got to know that. Got to know that it's everlasting strength. You understand? Get Psalms chapter uh, 37 and verse 37. So we keep our mind on the Lord. Yo, we're going to be at perfect peace. When we meditate on these words of God, we think on them. We deliberate. He's going to have us in perfect peace. It's when we start having our own mind, or we're trying to follow after the mind of another man, or we're trying to follow after another uh, idea that's not in this word of God, then you're going to go off. You're going to go off. But you know what? When you go off and you go into that trial, that's to bring you back, right, to get you right. All right, go ahead, read. Psalms 37, verse 37. Uh-huh. Mark the perfect man. Mark the what? The perfect man. You keep God's laws and commandments. You can be perfect. You will be perfect because your mind will be at perfect peace. Read. And behold the upright. Uh-huh. And behold the upright. Go ahead. For the end of that man is peace. For the what? The end of that man is what? Peace. It's peace. Peace. Yeah. Take your trial cheerfully. You understand? Meditate on the things of the Lord. You'll be at peace. Go ahead. Read. But the transgressors, but the transgressors, shall be destroyed together. Shall be destroyed together. So when, you, so but if you're like, you know what, I'm gonna fall into this mischief, and stay there on, it said you're gonna be destroyed together with the transgressors. You understand? Read. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. Shall be Bring cut out. off. So, hey, shalom, family, most high Christ bless. Lord's will, you got something out of this class that you can meditate on. You know what I'm saying? That'll help you whether you're going through a trial or you've been through a trial or you, you know what I'm saying? Or you in a trial right now and you need to get your mind right. You understand? Meditate on these scriptures. Hey, with that, I'm Officer Abner, IYC Augusta. Shalom, most high Christ bless is another mid-morning medicine.